Hello and welcome back to Strathpever Junction. Um, we have a slightly different video for you today. Um, the previous two have been all about the, the progress that we've been making on the, the layout. Uh, but today I thought I would do um, a, a little video on uh, modifications to my uh, special edition uh, Technical Services Bachman Class 08 shunter. Uh, now, in a previous video, I have uh, I've shown the results of putting in a stay alive uh, system and also a, a lock sound um, sound decoder um, into my other class of eight. So I thought I would walk everybody through the steps of doing it to, to this one here. Um, it's not a job for the faint hearted, it takes quite a long time. Uh, this video will probably be shot in a number of different sections and, and glued together in post-production. Um, but it's easy enough to do if you've got the confidence with a soldering iron, you've got a steady hand and uh, and you follow the instructions perhaps I'm showing you. Now it's not the only way to do it in my video, I have seen or heard one or two other ways of approaching this, um, but this has worked for me. It was actually easier than I expected, but uh, as ever with any of these things, um, they're expensive uh, expensive toys, so you, you do any work to them uh, at your own risk. But I'm sure uh, if you follow these steps or other steps in forums, you'll, you'll not have too many problems. Okay, let's get into it then. Okay, right, so here is the Class 8 shunter itself. Um, it was a, a limited edition one produced uh, quite a few years ago now for the now defunct model zone, but it's it's a nice little shunter. It's not DCC ready, but actually when it comes to fitting these uh, these micro lock sound decoders, that's that's a bonus, because it means there's there's less stuff to have to, to take out the way um, to, to fit everything in. But the, the other things that I will be fitting to this one are a replacement set of uh, steps and handrails, because uh, there wasn't any with this one. Um, I'm going to be fitting a, a cab light as well. Um, and uh, I've chosen one of these uh, micro or nano or any of the tiniest little surface mount LEDs that you can get in warm white. So I'll be inserting one of those into the cab itself. I've gone for a Limo or Limo 6 um, speaker from uh, YouTube. I used this in my uh, my other class 08, the, the blue water stripes one, uh, and it works really well. Um, it's a tiny wee speaker, but the sound that you get out of it is really pretty good. Um, the other thing that I will be inserting uh, into it is a, a Stay Alive uh, unit from ESU. Now, these aren't cheap. I think this is about 40 quid or something. It's a lot of money. But it works brilliantly with the lock sound decoders. Uh, you get a really good amount of uh, of stay alive energy from such a tiny wee capacitor, which you you just wouldn't be able to get um, unless you're using super caps. And I don't think you'd be able to get super cap that small with enough capacity to to really make a meaningful difference. So stay alive from ESU. I'll just pop that down there. And of course the decoder itself. Um, this is a, a lock sound version four. Um, this is Lego Man Biff, um, his sound project for this, which I think is probably the best. Um, I put a different one into um, my other weight shunter and it was alright, uh, it just wasn't anything particularly exciting. Uh, and I think it's nice sometimes to have different sound files in different locos so that they sound different, um, just to give a bit of variety in the layout. So, we've got the decoder, I'll take off that um, that speaker, it's, it's too big for what we need. We've got the, the Stay Alive as well. We've got the uh, the actual speaker, the wee speaker there. Uh, and we have the uh, warm white miniature LEDs. Um, now, obviously, in addition to all of that, we're gonna need some sundries. Uh, I have this tiny gauge uh, wire, which I use for uh, a lot of the, the LED work in in uh, my DCC locos. I've got a black and red there just for uh, for, for ground and positive. Um, I've got a selection of, uh, of other cables here, slightly bigger gauge, um, which I may, I may use, may not. Um, I like to try to stick with the right colours just to keep everything together, but we'll, we'll see how we get on. Um, and I have a selection of, uh, of tools here as well, so I have some 
some files which will come on to the need for them in due course, uh, some little jeweler's screwdrivers uh, and some snips, an exacto knife as well um, and just some other general tools, the, the kind of stuff that we, we all have for, for railway modelling so I'll not bore you with all that. But anyway, um, let's get uh, get this out of the box and uh, get on with the get on with the project. So there we have it. It's a, a lovely little class 08. Um, now, one of the things that uh, I see a lot of people um, have struggled with is actually getting the, the body off this uh, Bachmann class 08. Um, I have to admit I had that problem the first time I tried to get my other one open. Um, and there's a few videos on, on YouTube, some of which show you to take out loads of screws uh, and other ones that uh, show you the right way to do it. But in reality, it's a it's a fairly straightforward process to, to do. It only really re requires a small amount of screw removal and then the body should pop off. Uh, what I'll probably do first of all here is, is just to take the, uh, the couplings off. I don't use tension lock couplings. I use um, KD couplings. So I'll take these off because I'm not going to use them in any case. Um, and they just pull apart like that. Sometimes easier said than done. Um, I always use a servicing cradle. It's not exactly the cheapest to, to buy this Pico one. It's overpriced for what it actually is, but it is invaluable in, in terms of uh, avoiding getting any damage to, uh, to, to your locomotive. So what I'm gonna do here is just very gently ease off the, the tension lock coupling from the front, um, just this wee bit here, and I'll just set that to one side. Underneath that, you'll see um, there's a, a tiny wee screw here, um, which has been revealed. If you undo that screw, that's the only one that you need to, to take out in order to, to separate the different parts of this shunter. Um, so I'll just do that there and then carefully ease them off. Right, sorry, I paused it there because I was, uh, <laughs> I was worried that I'd end up doing one of these classic, oh, this is really easy to do, I'll take it apart, and then it didn't come apart. Anyway, um, just after I paused the camera, it was actually rather easy to take apart. There was a, a tiny wee hook actually on, on this version, which I don't recall having on the previous version, which was just holding things in very tightly, but uh, anyway, it popped open quite easily. The other thing just to remember is that some of these uh, Bachman class weights have a tiny bit of pipe here, uh, which just pokes into a little hole by the steps. So just make sure that you carefully lift up. This one's popped out really easily on its own. Um, on my other class away, it's it's a wee bit trickier to get it out and you have to use a pair of uh, tweezers. But anyway, um, that's where we're at. So it then just pulls apart very simply, just like that. Um, so we have the, the body here, which is pretty much standard to all the Bachman ones. There's a, a little weight there, which uh, we'll have to, to look at later um, to file it down. Um, and then we have the actual motor section itself. So I'll just pop the body to one side because we're, we're not going to, to be looking at that just at this point in time. We'll come back to that. Uh, the one thing, just looking at the, the motor here that I'm noticing, actually the, the cable here at, at the top has, has been very slightly squashed. So um, I'm going to have to perhaps replace that, that cable. Um, the other thing, uh, just to note, we've got the worm gear here. There's actually quite a lot of, of gunk on this. So I think I'll probably clean it before I put everything back together. Um, this being the, the older analog um, 08, uh, it doesn't have the 8 pin DCC chip socket on the front. Uh, the newer versions have that mounted here. Um, I did try to keep that in another conversion I did, but it ended up just getting in the way. So the easiest thing to do is to strip it out. So whether you have this old analog version or the DCC ready one, if you uh, Un undo the, the screws here and strip all of this out and then take off all of the components so that there's little capacitors and so on in there just to help smoothing on, uh, on DCC running. So we'll, we'll come on to that in, in due course. We'll strip everything out. So we've just got the, the pickups uh, and uh, we've got the, um, the, uh, the contacts on the motor itself just to, 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 to get that running. But uh, anyway, so, so that's the body there. Um, and uh, we'll set that to one side just now and uh, we'll move to the next step. Right, so I think what uh, I'll do just to start off with is to, to remove the, the weight that is in the body here. It's just a, a little Phillips head, I suppose it's a Phillips head, cross head anyway screwdriver. Um, and we'll, we'll just take that out. Um, what I normally do actually when I'm doing these builds, and you might hear off camera as we tink, is uh, I have a little jar like this, um, which I use just to 
stick all of the screws and weights and other bits and pieces in so that I know exactly where everything is and I don't lose things. Um, I have once or twice in the past uh, lost a few bits and pieces um, when I've been in the middle of a project. So uh, I should really be using some small pliers for this but uh, the snips anyway have worked. Whoops, put that to one side anyway. So that's the that's the counterweight out and uh, what that leaves us is, is with this this body just plastic now. The, the tricky part uh, is getting into the cab, which is where we're going to go next. Um, I want to get into the cab for two reasons. One, to, to pop in the, the cab light, which I mentioned at the beginning of the, window, the video. Uh, and the second reason is that is the only place that you're going to be able to fit in the Bachman model to be able to fit in the Stay Alive. Um, now, it does fit in absolutely fine. Um, the, a wee bit of shimming about. I also use a, a black marker or black paint to, to paint the, the, the cap that's on the Stay Alive unit uh, just to make sure that it's not that obvious through the window. But it, it's, it's easy enough to fit it in with some careful planning. The main problem, however, is getting into the cab. Now, it's not as tricky as getting into the cab on a Class 20, which is almost impossible to do without damage, but it is still pretty tricky nonetheless. Um, if you can see here, I, I don't know how obvious it is. I'll maybe move it in just to see. I don't know if that's going to to pick it up or not on the, on the focus, but there's two little lugs here, one there and one there. Now, you have to push these two lugs back um, while simultaneously pulling down the cab. So you need to push one back one way, one back the other way, and push down the cab. Um, it isn't the easiest of things to do. Um, and uh, sometimes there is possible um, a possibility of some damage to paint, particularly around here with the, the white lining and, and the red section there. Um, sometimes that can be a little bit fragile. So I'm going to switch off the camera <laughs> because I, I've only got one of these and I want to do it as carefully as I can. Um, but I will, I'll get this moving into a point where I can show you the, the latter half of it coming off um, just uh, in case there's any effing and blinding <laughs> and other things while I'm doing it. So I'll be back in just a minute once I've done this. Thanks very much. Right, okay, I'm back sooner than I thought. Um, I thought I'd just show you the, the way that I, I've done it in previous uh, videos to get it off um, and uh, it seems to be working here. Um, now, I use this tiny little jeweler screwdriver just to prise a, a open that wee lug there. And then I use the, the tension lock couplings, which I took off before, just to, to shim out on that side and the same on this side. Now, that holds the wee pegs clear of the plastic without using any metal to, to damage them. And should then, if we are very careful about it, enable us to, to slide off the, the cab without, uh, without any real damage. Now, once it's past the first wee bit, then it isn't such a problem um, because the, the lugs have now cleared. So we can we can take these back off and just, just keep these out of the way. I'll pop them over there actually. So then we just very carefully, maybe just one side at a time, just shimmy that down. Don't rush it. I did rush it on one that I did a while ago um, and it had to have a little bit of paint touching up afterwards. So. Um, so, oh, there we go, and the last bit, erase the finish. Um, and actually, what I'm noticing here is, there's a whole load of oil in here. Um, now, I don't think that's necessarily a great thing. I'm not sure quite why, why the, the oil would have, have come out there, but it has actually helped get that on and off with a bit of lubrication. So, anyway, I'll maybe just clean that up before we pop it back on again in due course and just to, to stop it going everywhere. But here's the two parts now. Um, we have uh, we have the cab itself. So what I will be doing here is uh, installing the the light in the, the 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 roof of the cab here, the cab light up there. In order to do that, um, I will need to paint this black. Uh, I learned the hard way by not doing that before. Um, and uh, the the problem that we had was that when you switch the light on, you got a very faint uh, glow on the top here. Um, so I'll be painting this maybe a couple of couple of coats of uh, of paint first of all just to to seal that off really from the light. Uh, on the back here, um, I'll be drilling a tiny little hole just in this corner here that will allow me to to feed the cable for the stay alive and for the lights 
through into the main body of the Loco. Um, you can also, if you want, paint some of the controllers. I did that and the other one, I spent quite a bit of time picking out all the detail. But in all honesty, once the cab's back on, with the windows being so small, with a driver in place, I'll probably pop in a driver to this one as well if I've got one sitting around spare. Um, and the stay alive in, you can barely see the controls. So I'm not going to bother um, painting the, the controls this time, but you might want to yourself. It's perfectly easy to do. Um, the uh, the one thing that's a bit of a shame actually about this Bachmann model is that the um, the, the quality of the, the cab interior isn't as good as, as the Hornby or some of the other ones. I think the Hornby has um, a, a much more realistic uh, sort of control panel, but hey, as I say, you, you don't really see the inside of that too much. Um, and on the back of one, the doors don't open either, which again restricts the view. So anyway, so there we have it. So I'll, I'll pop the uh, the main body to one side for now. Um, and what I'll do now is just move on to the, uh, the painting of the roof here. Uh, let that dry before I move on to the next stage. Okay, see you in a wee bit. Okay, right, so we'll, we'll move on to the next part here, which is, is just painting the, the inside of the cab. Uh, prior to installing the light itself. Um, I'm going to use just some cheap humble acrylic black for this. Um, you could use enamel paint if you want, but it'll take too long to dry, so um, I'm going to pop in a, a couple of coats of this. Uh, I'm just going to plaster the entire roof there, being careful not to um, to get it onto the, the, the window gla uh, glass, the glazing in there. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll do that and we'll let it dry. Um, what I found through trial and error with previous projects where I've been uh, installing lights and, and had to put in some black paint is, um, is more, uh, more than less is probably the best way to approach it. Um, I did a, a DBSO conversion a while ago um, and there's some photos on my, my Facebook page of that. And generally speaking, um, I, was, I was really happy with how it came out. Uh, apart from the fact that uh, I must have missed a tiny spot of black around one of the light tubes. Um, and uh, Or maybe I just hadn't put enough black on it, I'm not sure. And unfortunately, when you put the headlight on, um, if, the, if it's in push-pull operation and heading back towards Glasgow with the DBSO driving, um, the, the headlight has a tendency to cast a a bit of a, a white glow behind the, the light box, but it's all right. Um, and to be honest with you, normally um, I'm, I'm driving my, my Scott Rail push pulls uh, with the, the Class 47 heading forward. But anyway, I digress. I'm just uh, painting the inside here, um, as you can see, just with the black paint, a good liberal coating. I'm going to do it all across the, the top of the, the cab um, just to make sure that there's no light bleed. Um, may as well do it just now, because if we don't, we can't really, well, we can come back later, but it's uh, a bit of a pain in the, the derriere to go through all these steps again, just to apply some more paint. So anyway, I, I'll stop uh, stop waffling and storytelling just now, and we'll come back once this is fully painted and dried. Okay, thanks very much. See you soon. Okay, I'm back. So I have given uh, the, the roof of the cab here uh, a couple of coats of black, acrylic paint. So I'm just going to let that dry. Um, but uh, there's nothing to stop me getting on with the next stage. So uh, the next stage really is to create the, the passage to get the, the cables or the wires for the, the cab lighting and the stay alive unit um, through from the cab through into the main body of the, the shunter. Um, so there isn't a huge amount of room to play for play with, but um, through trial and error, um, I have worked out that there is a, a small area just in the, the middle here, just behind where the counterweight would be. So we'll maybe pop the, the counterweight just back in just so that we can have a look here. Um, just in this area here, there's a, there's a slight depression. Um, and if we bring the cable in from this side into that depression, it can then be fed under the counterweight, or not the counterweight, under the weight, um, with a little bit of filing, which will come onto it, and then it can come along the top of the, the body here to where we need it. So I'll just take out the, the weight again now, pop it to one side. Um, I have marked on the outside of the cab, um, you might not be able to see it, um, but uh, I'll just see how the lighting is, is doing there. It's maybe not good enough for that, but there's a tiny black mark that I've marked here, just there on the side of the instrument panel. Now, that is where we're going to, to drill through, just in that bit there. Um, I'm gonna use, I think, a, a two millimeter drill bit. Um, I'll pop it up here just in case, in case you can see. Um, but uh, we'll use a two millimeter drill bit just to, to drill through, through here. 
and that'll pop into the, the right place on the inside. So we'll get the drill in here um, and uh, I'll probably go relatively quiet for this bit just to make sure I'm concentrating and don't screw it up. I'll pop that in there. I think I normally find when you're you're drilling through um, plaster like this is just to, to take it really slowly, sometimes do just on and off movements like that so you don't go all the way through and create any difficulties. Just clear off that rubbish. So there we have the hole from the cab through into the inside there. Now I'm just going to use the X-Acto knife here just to tidy that up. Uh, you often find with, with drilling plastic that you'll get just little shards there just to tidy up. Sometimes these can actually be quite sharp uh, and are enough with these very thin cables to uh, to cut through the insulation. So uh, we'll move that to one side. Anyway, so that is the, the body prepared now for uh, receiving the cables from the cab and, uh, and all the rest. So we'll set this to one side uh, and we will move on back, I think, to the, the actual cab itself for the cab light installation. Okay, so we're back with the cab now. Um, the black acrylic paint that uh, was applied earlier has dried. So what we're gonna do now is to affix the cab light uh, into the, the, the roof of the cab. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, we're gonna use one of these tiny, I don't know if we'll be able to make that out, it's uh, probably, uh, probably a bit too small, but one of these tiny little surface mount LEDs that you can get from China, from eBay, um, that have been pre-wired. Uh, now, this one's a, a warm white, um, which is probably about the closest that you can get to uh, the, uh, the, the, the sort of incandescent glow that you used to get in, in the locomotives. Um, they come with tiny little wires which can be pretty finicky um, to, to solder. Some of them are uh, an enameled copper which you can just scrape off the enamel uh, and then it works absolutely fine. These ones have a very slight, I don't know if it's plastic or silicon cover and it can be a wee bit of a pain, but if you give them a scrape with a scalpel edge or an exacto knife, that tends to, to let you get in to get the soldering. The one tip that I would say with these is check them before you install them. I've once uh, installed one of these uh, in a, I think it was a class uh, 156 DMU that I was adding lights to and I glued them all in place and found that one of them didn't work. But anyway, I have tested this one and it does work so we're, we're pretty much uh, good, good to go with it. So what I normally like to do is um, get a little blob of uh, medium super glue um, there's a whole variety of different types you can use. This stuff here is called uh, Zappa Gap. I use it for woodworking, um, but it's, uh, it's it's pretty decent stuff. Um, so I I tend to just squirt out a little bit onto a bit of paper or something like this. That doesn't really matter if it gets uh, ruined and I have to throw it away. Um, and then get a, a little cocktail stick like this, and then just dot it where I want it. Now, certainly for the first layer, uh, less is more. Um, the uh, the glue will dry nice and quickly if you if you just put a small amount on. Um, and once it's once it's dried, then you can dollop on some extra glue if you want. So I put a tiny drop of super glue in the middle there. Um, I don't know if you'll see, but it's fairly obvious what I'm doing. Tiny drop of super glue. I'll then mount the. Uh, the resistor in it. And then what I like to do is to to give it a wee scoosh of, um, there we go, what do you call it? Activator, that's it, activator. Comes in a, in a spray can like this. Um, and that just helps to, to set the super glue just that little bit more quickly um, so that uh, we're not having to worry about anything moving when we let go or anything like that. So we'll just pop the, uh, pop the light in place like that and give it a wee scoosh of activator like that. Oh, let's come out. There we go, that's got it this time. So I'll just let that set up properly and then we'll come back uh, in a couple of minutes once I put some more layers of glue on and it's absolutely set in place uh, and then we'll move on to the next step. Um, the super glue has pretty much gone off yet now, but what I like to then do is use a little bit of uh, Deluxe Materials glue and glaze on top. Um, it just provides 
Uh, a little bit of extra security. It's it sets the clearance why it's used on on glazing and coaches and so on. Um, but I think sometimes it can provide a little bit of a lens effect uh, and help give a slightly more natural um, sort of throw to the light as well. So what I tend to do with this is just again a bit like the super glue, put a little blob onto a bit of card that you don't mind getting glued up and. Uh, Let's get this coming out now. It's been a wee while. Oh, there we go. Way, way more than I need there, but anyway. Um, better stuff too much than not enough. So um, I generally take a little bit of this, dollop it on top, um, and then uh, that'll hold it in place. Don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> it's not going to move, uh, and the light should be quite nice. So we'll take a wee dollop of that on top. I often use this, um, actually, this glue and glaze, uh, if I'm doing lights in, um, say, like the DBSO conversion I did, or uh, uh, if I'm, I've got some uh, Derby Technical Center um, rolling stock that I'm working on just now. And again, this is a really good way to to get lights set in place. We'll let that dry, um, and then we'll come back to routing the wires, um, routing them alongside the Stay Alive capacitor uh, or Stay Alive unit wires uh, and getting things through to the business end of the, the, the shunter. Okay, right, so I mentioned a wee bit earlier in the video that we were going to need to, to file out a little bit of the weight to enable the, uh, the cab light and the Stay Alive cables to feed through the little hole from the cab and through into the main body uh, of, of the shunter. Um, now, the easiest way that I found to do this, you could do it with a Dremel, but it's so finicky, unless you have maybe a jig set up, a, a wee vise or something to hold it uh, tight, I, I think you might be running into losing fingers territory or certainly <laughs> losing bits of fingernails. So the last time I did it, I just used a file. It took a little bit of time to do, um, but it meant I could be very neat. I only took away as much as I absolutely wanted and it was perfectly safe. So what I did was I uh, installed the weight back in the body and then I worked out where I needed to, uh, to file it away. So, what I need to do here is just to mark it, so you can see there, so the root of the cable, so it pops out here, we want it to come around this corner there, into there, down the back, and then underneath and along the side. So I've marked those two bits there, I'll take the weight out again now, I'll use my uh, non-plier pliers, so we'll take it out there again. Pop the body to one side because we don't need to touch that just now and uh, I don't want to damage it. <laughs> um, come back to the weight here. Now th this is where the cable was going in, so we want it to come across to there, there, down this back side here, along here, and then along here, and if we follow that path, there, if you can see that, so along there, along there, along there, and to there. If we follow that little path down, then that will give us a channel um, through which the cables will be able to, to run without getting compressed um, or damaged or anything like that. Now, it might be possible to get away without doing the filing, but uh, in all honesty, I like to just do a good job and do things properly. Uh, and doing it this way, filing it down, cleaning off any sharp edges will ensure that the cables definitely won't get crushed or damaged and will not need to come back to them. So I'll just mark this up now. And then to save you all the boredom of watching me filing it away, I'll go and do uh, the lion's share of it and then we'll come back and have a look at what I've done. Now, just before I get filing, um, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. Uh, one, make sure that you actually move the body of the loco well away from where you're doing the filing. Because the last thing you want is for iron filings to get into the motor assembly, uh, into the magnets and cause um, problems in there. So make sure whenever you're milling or filing around the motors, you pop it to one side. Uh, the other thing is that um, I have three different types of needle file here. I've got a round one, a triangular one, and a square one. Um, I often find the triangular one is really good to get a groove going. 
you can get a really fine groove uh, and then once it's going um, you can you can open that up um, and uh, and get in one of your other shape files probably the round one um, I'll just start here actually while I'm talking um, probably the round one to get a nice round channel for everything to move in um, but uh, we'll, we'll see when we get going so that's really starting to come away quite quickly it's a bit like sawing wood once you've got um, a grip, a, a gouge going, it, it's it's quite easy to keep it going. Um, now I was moving it backs and forwards there to start off with. With files the backward stroke doesn't actually do anything, um, the teeth are generally um, milled in such a way that it's the forward stroke that does it. I was only moving backs and forwards just to, to kind of keep the straight line like that but once you've got it going you only really need to move it forward to get that cutting action. Okay, that's me uh, just about there now. I have got a channel formed all the way along the bottom, turning corner, a sweeping bend, up through this section here and just tailing off slightly at the top. Now all I've got left to do is just very carefully just to file away some of these rough edges there, just to make sure there's nothing, I should leave it there, nothing that might snag on, on any of the, these fine conductors or cables once they're running through. Um, but I'm pretty happy, pretty happy with that. Uh, the one thing that I would mention in retrospect, having said earlier, uh, don't use a Dremel. Um, I do have a Dremel and if I was going to do this again, I think I would probably use the Dremel just to, to take care of doing it. Okay, so we're going to move on now to uh, the Stay Alive capacitor um, or the Power Pack Mini, uh, which is the name that the ESU market uh, market their mini stay alive under uh, and it, it really it really is mini <laughs> it's it's a ti tiny little uh, component um, but there really wouldn't be any other easy way to do it in such a, a tiny locomotive uh, other than this so I just pop the packaging to one side and um, what we have with these if you haven't seen one before uh, is a, a tiny little capacitor um, I think this one says one farad which is yeah, one farad at 2.7 volts, which is actually quite quite a high capacity, but but a very small capacitor. And the, the way that they achieve this, dealing with the voltages and so on, is to use some clever electronics here so they can maximise the use of a tiny capacitor in a way that you couldn't do if you were knocking up your, your own Stay Alive pack with a, a diode resistor and a capacitor combination. Anyway, the the uh, the ESU power packs come with three cores, rather three cables with them, or three leads. Um, there is uh, the voltage for Stay Alive, and there's also I think a logic cable, uh, so that the uh, the circuitry on here can talk with the circuitry on the ESU uh, can controller uh, the ESU decoder itself. So, anyway, the uh, the beauty with this one being so small is. Uh, it's very easy to fit it in. Now, the way that I do it is by using uh, black tack to fix it just in this position here, uh, which still allows us to get in a, a, a driver if we want to put one where my, my thumb is just now. Uh, it allows us to route the cables round the side here. Just get my wee pointer. Round the side here through the, the hole that we've already drilled in the side there and it also leaves room um, for the cab light wiring which we'll, we'll come on to uh, again in due course. It is possible to see the capacitor despite it being so small from out with the, the cab. Um, so what I normally do is colour it in. You could do that with black paint if you want but what I find uh, just, as, just as good uh, is, is just a black marker pen. Um, now this isn't destructive in any way, shape or form. A permanent marker pen, I should say. It's not destructive in any way, shape, or form. It's literally just some black pen on top. Um, what I normally find is it needs a few coats of black pen on top, um, and the best way to do this is to wait until each coat is dry. Otherwise, with marker pens, you, you tend to get that uh, kind of anomaly where if you keep applying it over still drying stuff, it takes off the, the stuff you've just laid on, as I'm probably in danger of starting to do there. Uh, so anyway, what I'll do is um, I'll let this dry um, I'll put another couple of coats on and then we will come back for the next steps. Okay, so now that we have our Stay Alive unit uh, nicely covered in black 
black pen just to help disguise it. Um, we will move on to black tack. Now, if you haven't seen black tack before, I mean, I assume most Realme modelers will have done, but it's basically blue tack, but many, many times tackier. Uh, and once you've stuck it down with black tack, it's probably not going to come off anytime soon. So you don't need a huge amount of black tack for this um, because you want it to be the, the capacitor to be lying as close to the, the floor as possible. So I generally just take off a fairly small amount um, like like so and uh, and stick it down. Sorry, you might be able to hear my cat <laughs> in the background. Um, so once we've got the black tack on there, I just lightly position it where I want it and then press it down. Now, I don't push it too hard because there are components underneath uh, where the black tack is and I don't want them to be damaged um, or any of the solder jo joints to, to be damaged. Um, but we just press it down like that until it's in the position that we want um, and that should be grand, ready for the next stage. One of the other things that I often take an opportunity to, to do when I'm doing any project like this is to put somebody into the cab. Um, I know there's different schools of thought on uh, whether having uh, drivers or passengers is good or bad. If it's out in the line, you would expect to see passengers in the carriages and drivers in the cab. But if it's in the yard, you might not expect to see a guy stood in the cab uh, for hours on end doing nothing. Um, but anyway, I'm going to pop one in. Shunters uh, were always very busy, so I'm sure this guy will have lots of work. Uh, the main thing to do is to cut them to the right size, particularly with the Bachman one. There isn't very much room, so you need to cut them down. I think, well, I've gone for roughly the sort of belt line, waistline uh, on on the, the driver here. There is a little window, um, a kind of forward-looking window on the, the Class 08. So I often try to get him um, partly looking out that, partly looking out the side window, uh, depending <coughs> depending on uh, which view you're going to be. You're going to be looking in the cab. So what I do again, um, a bit like I did before, is just take a wee dot of glue. Um, I use super glue just for for gluing the people in place. I, I don't want this guy to to move, so I'll just use that. Um, I tend to get a little bit on a cocktail stick and then just apply it to the, the base of the of the person. Um, I'll take a wee bit more here. Again, less is often more, um, certainly for the initial glue. Uh, you can always stick a wee bit more on if you want to um, further down the track. Uh, but that will probably be just about sufficient there. That's great. I tend to use medium super glue. Um, thick super glue takes forever to dry. Um, and uh, the thin stuff has a bad tendency of kind of going any, everywhere. Um, so oh, let's just pop him just in like that. I'm just going to um, coax him into to the right position here so that he is uh, both looking out and looking in at the same time, if that makes sense. Um, one of the things just to, to remember when you're doing this is to make sure that all arms um, and uh, heads and all the rest of it are um, not overhanging anything, otherwise they may get clipped when you you pop the uh, I was going to say pop the hood back on, but you, when you pop the cab back on again. But anyway, there we go. There's the uh, there's the driver there looking out um, front and to the side. So we'll let that dry. Once he's dried in place, then we will come back and uh, look at rerouting the wires. Okay, right. So now that the glue um, for the cab light has just about dried, what I've started to do is to route the, the wires from the, the cab light along the top of the cab and down the side of the cab. Now one thing that to note when you're doing this, I'll see if I can get in a bit closer so you can see, um, is that where the bottom of the window is end, so that the lower half of the windows, is also where the floor of the cab comes up to. So it's really important that uh, if you're fixing, I'm using black tack to fix down the wires because it's very quick and they're not going to go anywhere if they're black tacked. Far less messy than glue for this part. But whatever you're using to hold it down, make sure that uh, the holding down fixtures 
stop at the bottom of the window because we'll need to have uh, have these wires bending out slightly so they can they can follow the contour of the floor of the cab. So anyway, what I've done is um, I've got a tiny little bit of black tack and I've just gone along and pressed it down just to hold those wires in so that they are uh, running along. Let's see if we can get a good way. So they're um, they're running they're running down this corner here and stopping just at the bottom of the window there. Um, and uh, that's where we'll leave it for those wires. So I'll just uh, finish off with the last little bit of black tack in the corner here, and then we'll move on to routing these wires along with the Stay Alive uh, unit wires back into the front end of the, the, the shunter. So one thing that you might want to do at this stage, uh, just before we move on, is to take a black pen, uh, mark a pen again, and just to colour in the, the white and red or other non-black wires that may be visible in the cab. So I've done these ones here, as you might be able to see if I put on a black one, there we are. These ones here I've done, um, and I'm just going to do the same with these very fine cables, um, or wires rather, uh, in the cab. Now, you don't have to do this. It just reduces their glare very slightly if they happen to be on show. Um, when the when the cab is repositioned, the uh, the the hole that we drilled originally was two millimeters, and I mentioned that maybe you 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 could get away with drilling one a little bit bigger. Um, with hindsight, I think probably two and a half millimeters would be a better uh, size to use, but I think we'll be we'll be fine with this anyway. So really, the the idea here is just to feed in the cables or the wires rather through that little hole and pick them up the other side. So the little hole is the one that we drilled earlier on. Um, now, I tend to find that if you feed the, the thin cables in first, it's the easiest way to do this. So I keep saying cables, I mean wires. See if we can, see if we can get this one in. The end of this one is slightly rough because I had to rough it up just to get the, uh, the test wire. There we go, the test wire in when we were uh, when I was doing testing on it. Um, now what I'm going to do for this is uh, just pop a little bit of black tack just around the end here just so that these don't pull out again while I'm fishing the other ones through. There's nothing more annoying than uh, than cables pulling themselves back through again <laughs> and, uh, when, you're, when you're pulling other ones through. So um, now with these ones, same as I've just done, feed them back through the hole here uh, and then the other side. Oh, there we are, and that's worked, paid off. There we go. Now, the key thing here is to remember that for the... Uh, sorry, multitasking, not my strong point. There we go, let's pull this one through here. Um, we don't need to leave any slack in the cables that have come through from the... Uh, the stay alive unit, but we do need to leave a little bit of slack for the cables, uh, for the wires rather, that, that come from the cab just in case we ever want to take the cab off, otherwise there won't be enough give. So what I tend to do is pull them through um, and then once we've got them through and we've got the cab back on again, I'll feed just a tiny little bit back in again so there's a little bit of give, but not enough that the cables will be particularly visible or at all visible from in the cab. And then we'll just slide this back in, being very careful not to trap any of these cables. Wires. <laughs> there we go. Back on. There we go. Just very gently ease it back on like that. And these wee lugs should, once it's in place, connect back in. I'll try again there. It's uh, a wee bit finicky, but we're just about there. There we are, and po push them home. There we go, and there we have it. So we have the driver in the cab, stay alive capacitor unit in the in the cab, or the ESU. Uh, power pack mini I should say um, and uh, the the wiring as well for the lights. Now I can looking through this window see the wiring for the uh, cab light just very slightly so I'm just gonna pull that down very slightly there we are just to pull out of view. Brilliant! 
And because we've mounted the capacitor directly behind the wash stripe panel between the windows, you can barely see it there at all. You can catch glimpses from the side, but unless you knew it was there, I don't think you're going to know. Now, looking on the inside, we can see here's the cable has come through the little hole here. If you wanted, you could put a little bit of black tack there just to hold them in place, but it's probably not required. I might do it. We'll see when we get to the next stage. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for part one. It's, uh, it's quite a long project, this. It takes a number of hours to do. So we will come back with part two to look at the, the wiring, getting the decoder properly fitted, getting it tested, getting the whole thing put back together, and then giving it a, a quick whirl on the test track just to, to make sure everything works fine and to see how it performs. So hope to see you again in part two. Cheerio for now. Bye-bye.